Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. Previously, on Friday Night Quests, a pledge to join a resistance, a reward for finding a thief, a chance of discovering a lost loved one, a risk of losing previous anonymity. Our heroes have many paths before them in Matet, and a storm looms on the horizon. Phineas, you are running after, and you see your friends moving through the streets, trying to find where Othea went. Um, what do you do? I run up to them. Quatra, Ivy, uh, do, do you guys have a second? Uh, I have plenty of seconds. Okay. There goes another. Sure. Yeah, well, there's a real problem that's going to hit us in, like, a few days. It's, um, are you familiar with something called Grave Winds? I don't know if I would be. Uh, roll history checks. Each of you, actually. Ooh. I never get to roll history checks. 20. Nine. That makes sense. <laughs> um, Quattro, you are familiar with these, and uh, Ivy, you are not. Yeah. Uh, and you said they're rare before? They are rare. Oh, okay. You've heard stories. I don't think you've ever encountered one. Got it. Do you want to give him a quick recap of what a grave wind is? Yes. I, I remember. Okay. I remember. He listened to the last episode. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, did I? I don't know. I remember. <laughs> I is this did. a podcast? <laughs> What are we doing here? Oh, that's what these mics are for. Oh, you guys are recording me? <laughs> um, All these years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe you. Well, do you know what a grave wind is? I do. How are you feeling about that information? Skeptical, but I believe that you think one's coming. I mean, so the, you know the science guy who was at the dinner the other night? The guy who was like way into his books. No. I was preoccupied. No, I, yes, you both were preoccupied. But listen, this guy probably knows what's going on. He seemed really enthusiastic about it, and I'm pretty sure it's real. And it's coming in, I think, like two days, if I remember correctly. I do have a question. Yes? What are we talking about? A grave wind. It's like a, it's like a, think of it like a bad storm, but like the worst possible storm you could think of. It's uh, from another plane of existence? Another plane of existence. Yeah, you know how Althea, who we should find, sh she's from another plane? Uh, this is like oh, one of those. But I, it's I know I know what other planes are. Um, Yes, if it is from another plane, it must be bad. Wait, what, what, other, actually, what other planes no, are you aware not, of, Ivy? Not other planes are bad. It could just be okay. Well, this one is a bad. This one's a bad one. Uh, this is from a plane. It's 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 dark. It's malevolent. Uh, it's just ball around bad. A storm and winds that come from that plane is there's, gotta be horrible. There's nothing wrong with dark storms. Like they're necessary for controlling for balance. Well, this one brings like probably death. Oh, that does not sound like balance. No, 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 no. Grave wind, bad, very bad. So we should is find. Is it called a grave wind because it brings death? Probably. Probably. Yeah. But we should find Althea, and we should let the guards know, seek some shelter. I mean, we've got to wait this thing out. Do we know, like, how to actually survive one of these? Just to stay out of it, essentially. Okay, don't be outside. Don't be outside. Okay. Because the main thing is that they tend to... They tend to bring bridges between dimensions. If you're caught in the rain, you could potentially mm. shift into another dimension. Like a tornado. Like a tornado. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like how tornadoes break planes. Mm-hmm. And shift you into they other do in Wizard of Oz. That's true, actually. Ah, that is true. <laughs> I guess I've never been in one, so I don't know the what I'm saying. The original is the Kai. Wait, does that mean if you get caught in a tornado, you just go to another plane of existence? Let's test it. <gasps> yeah, let's go. All right, so everybody, anybody? let's go. All Field right, trip. Does good. anybody have some red slippers? Yes, I do. I Ruby. Mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'll think red is. Mine are velvet, so they just taste delicious. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'll go. I will warn the guards. Okay. I thought we were looking for Althea. No, we should find Althea first, and then we should warn the guards. Uh, All right. I think, like, where do you think she would have gone? Hmm. I have a theory. 
I think maybe, you know, she had a connection with some of the guards here. Maybe she went to where the guards go to hang out, like a like a bar or a lounge or something like that. So. Althea does enjoy bars with those right? um, drinks in them. So we should check out a local spot. All right. Lead the way. So I go. Didn't I ask somebody about where the local spot is? You did, yes. I thought I did. Yeah. Uh, and it is at the Dunn House is where the guards do their drinking. They have okay. a bar built in. So open the door. Look inside. It is full of guards who are wearing the same green poncho, the uniform that they all wear. Um, they all wear a green poncho? Mm-hmm. Just one. Kick butt. They all share a yeah, green Yeah, they all poncho. share a poncho. <laughs> they trade it off. Like it's really the traveling pants. It's a really cozy group. <laughs> um, different genders, different ages. There's a real spectrum. Some of them look to be like maybe 16 at most. Others look... At most? Like well, some like on the young end, like they must be at most oh, 16, sixteen at, at their youngest. And then with others, mm. it's like they're probably pushing eighty. Mm. Wow. Okay. So I uh, I look around to see if I can spot Althea. Uh, make a perception check. Okay. I'm assuming there is. Can a, I make one as well? A pension. Oh uh, yeah, you system. can all make one. Fourteen. Thirteen. Eighteen. Uh, you look around. You do not see Althea. You do find... You recognize the old man that you saw on watch. Oh, good. The first time you arrived. The one we couldn't understand. Yeah. Okay. I, I go up to him. Uh, hold on. Hello, yes. We are looking for the one of us who was with us previously, but not is with us now. I mean, you mean Valeria? No, her, her name's Althea. Oh, you're talking about that. You're talking about you, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Was he one of the humans or one of the animals? She was not either of those things. We could have picked any of these soldiers to talk to. <laughs> yeah, literally any of them. <laughs> yes, but what fun is that? <laughs> What's your name, other soldier? <laughs> you don't know me, my name is Yosef. God damn it. Oh, they all. Oh, no. Oh, oh you mean me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you. No, oh, we're you. not talking to your crew. No, no, no. <laughs> definitely talking to you. Are you talking to Yosef here? Y- yeah. You oh, your first name? Yosef here knows all this stuff. Yeah, I know everything I go on is, eh? No, nah, I'm, I'm curious of what kind of information you can share. Do you understand him, Yosef? Yeah, of course. Perfect. Yosef, we're looking for Althea. I don't know what it is. Can you tell us a little bit more about Althea? Yeah, she's got uh, she's got a very uh, red complexion. Ah, oh, the tabling. Yes, exactly. Uh, do you know where she is? I don't know. No, he does not. Perfect. Well, this was a great investigation that we just had. I think we should probably go somewhere else. Um, I closed. would like to go up to the bartender. I was made to. No, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you go up to the bartender. Oh, it actually looks like it's more. Um, it is another member of the guard. It's almost like people just kind of mill behind the bar and make their own drinks. Got it. Hello, yes. Has anyone here seen someone make a whiskey of fire? Uh, no. No, we haven't. Oh, well, this is You're looking for someone specific? Yes, I'm looking for someone who drinks those whiskeys of fire. She is red herself. She is quite serious. Um, I get in trouble with her quite often, but I do not mean to. Have you seen her? Uh, are you trying to hide from her because you're in trouble? Or are you? I'm not currently in trouble. Wait. <laughs> Phineas, am I in trouble with Althea? Is that where she left? I don't think so, but quick, quick question. That, that was a great uh, question you had. Do they serve fire whiskey anywhere in the city? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can find it at pretty much any tavern around here. Except for this tavern. Oh, no, we have it. Okay. It's, uh, just, it's not a very commonly ordered drink. That's fair. Uh, well, um, I think we should probably go somewhere else, don't you think? Maybe we should grab some fire whiskey and place it out. <laughs> and like, then, like a trap. You mean as if she is just drawn to any fire whiskey? Yes. You guys think, I think I'm an alcoholic. I think that is a Oh, my God, idea. I think I heard her. <laughs> She was here with us the whole time. She's inside our She's heart. in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are already a team. We have, just... we have fun here on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, this was my best lead. So uh, I, where do you guys think she might have gone? What else do we know about Althea? Very little. She's angry a lot. She um, can shoot fire from her hands. Wait a second. She... I never seen that. She's very pretty. She had some... She had some interest in those fire giants when we were coming into the city. Do you think she might have gone to see what was going on with them? It's possible. I mean, right? That was might have been a concern. She didn't seem super happy to see them. She doesn't seem super happy to see anybody. Bartender, um, where fire giants, right? Fire giants in the city? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
where are they typically uh, staying, like sleeping and uh, resting and frolicking? Oh, their stables are below the uh, stables. common quarter. Stables, okay. Uh, under, next to the slab that's sort of built into the side of the of the rock there. Oh, okay. Well, um, is this there was, an easy... This was definitely my accent the entire it time It definitely was. Talking. It, oh. is... You must have had something in your throat. I did. There was, there's a couple of us milling around back here. <laughs> So is it easy access down there? Do we, can we just walk down and, and check them out? And um, you'd probably want to go with a member of the guard if you're going down there. Hello, yes, all guards in this tavern who would like to come with us. I'll come with you. Oh, Excellent. No. <laughs> also, side note: there is a grave wind coming. So there's. Just wanted to drop this piece Mike's of information face for you. Just went like he blanched. He was like, uh oh. I'm trying to decide how many of them know what that means. <laughs> well, as long as one of them does. A couple of them do. Sweet. Uh, Yosef actually like kind of goes pale. He's like, a grave one. Yosef knows all. <laughs> He's ancient. <laughs> yeah, which is why it's really important we get everybody inside. Our friend is missing, so we're looking for I'll her. Go a grave head. Probably two days. Probably. Yeah, uh, this out. Excellent. I thought I was getting getting most of that, but nothing. Not a not a word. Yosef, when was the last time a grave wind came through? Uh, uh, years. Hmm. Years at least. So. Does Metet have a grave wind warning system or emergency? Uh, nah, decades. Hard to tell. Some last time. So maybe like word of mouth. Tell all the other guards. The guards tell other people. Pour people inside. He like stands up and starts like snap at people. Yeah, I gotta go down the same warning hang. Fellas, I'm a con I gotta. What? Start what? To, <laughs> no, what? they'll start like a couple a couple of the younger ones are like, I, I don't know him that well. What does that mean? And like older so ones are like confused. grabbing him grabbing them by the shoulder. I was like, hoping the entire room would just filled with just unrecognizable words. Like, <laughs> I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing that, that you guys know is that the Dunn House are the guards of the city and they are a family. Mm. So these are all brothers and sisters, technically and legally, so they spend a lot of time with each other. They know what Yosef is saying, except for the younger ones who don't know him that well. Got to respect your elders, man. So Not they cool. start so sending people out into the streets. And Yosef says, I'll come with you. You're going down to the stable there. We've got to make sure they know. If we're going to do another shipment, we've got to make sure the guys are not going to die. It's in the desert. Sounds like he's coming with us. All right, let's go. Oh, good. So leave the tavern and head on down to that big old slab. All right. I love that country song. <laughs> yeah. Head on down to the big old slab. <laughs> Lil Nas X is gonna come do the songs for partial arc. Althea, let's cut over to you. Yes. Oh, sorry. Starwipe to Althea. Starwipe. <laughs> My favorite. Starwipe is gross, dude. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up to the temple to Helmia. Yes. And you step inside the doors. And inside you can see that there is a... A lot of people crowded in. I just want to make sure that this is a clear visual for everyone. I walk in like in the second Lord of the Rings movie, like Aragorn walks in. <laughs> like slamming the doors? Like just throwing the doors open all sexy like. I yeah. consider Hobbit 2 the sex- <laughs> that second Lord of the Rings movie. Too Hobbit, too, <laughs> too, too furious. furious. Too Furious. <laughs> so you, too Hobbit, too Frodo. <laughs> so you swing there open the doors like swing Smaug. Swing open the doors like Aragorn. Um, yes, I walk in. And what do I see again? Sorry. Uh, it's crowded with people. Yeah, okay. Um, most of them are not in worship. Most of them are actually being tended to um, f- with medications. Uh, you see that there are a few religiously garbed individuals along the lines of nuns, but not quite so analogous, Mm -hmm. for want of a better word. These are the priests and the priestesses, um, and they are administering... Xylotrec to everybody. (laughs) They are administering these, like, liquids, um, concoctions, these potions for people. Okay. Um, And you can tell that some of them have... They've got, like, bed sores that are being tended to as well, um, especially with people who are lying down it looks like they may not have full use of their limbs that are lying on pallets Mm -hmm. um some of the pews have actually been scraped aside and pushed away to clear a space for some people and based on the dust that's on those pews that must have happened a while ago Mm -hmm. um you get the sense that they may not have been intended to be a long-term um condition but seems to be 
uh, from like the amount of straw that's on the floor where those beds are, mm-hmm. this has become a more permanent situation, or at least indefinite. So it's like a hospital now. It's it's sort of like a triage. Yeah, to to a degree, or it's it's like a like a. There is a term I'm trying to come up with that I'm not coming up with because I'm... It's all Zy- good. Xylotrek dispensary. So, Hosp- Xylotrek dispensary, exactly. Or hospice. Uh, not quite hospice. It's more along the lines of like a shelter. Yeah. Yeah. This is where the poor get tended to. I would like to walk up to whoever looks like they're in charge. Yeah, you recognize the vestments of uh, one of the priests who definitely is, you know, the bishop analog, mm-hmm. um, who has sort of a curly blonde with gray hair mm-hmm. um you normally he would wear some sort of cap in religious practices but he doesn't have that on he's just got some vestments that have a little bit of sort of gray stains to them from various fluids it's almost like these are the clothes that he knows like the smock essentially that mm-hmm. he wears like these are the robes that i wear when i'm treating people that i don't mind if i get a little bit of uh salve or other fluids, bodily mm-hmm. fluids onto them. Fart water. Fart water, exactly. Um, and he is wrapping... It's a real problem. <laughs> he's wrapping a bandage on a burn uh, on someone's ankle. Uh, there's a young boy, uh, probably about nine or ten, uh, who has a burned foot, and he's wrapping uh, around that. Does this man knows look like he knows what he's doing with this bandage? Very much so. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's like, oh, uh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. How are band-aids? I've never seen a foot before. Oh, um, it's on the reverse side. Damn it. I got to re-hit Ryer, all these people. Um, I wait patiently off to the side okay. until he's done with the boy. Okay. Uh, yeah. It takes about five minutes um, for him to complete the wrap mm-hmm. and, he, and, and for him also to explain the best way to keep it clean. Um, and he is, the boy is led off by another boy who looks to be a couple years older. Mm-hmm. You don't see a family resemblance, mm-hmm. um, but the boys step aside and the priest stands up and begins sort of looking around to see who else might need immediate attention. Mm-hmm. Does he know, does me at all since I'm standing near him? Well, how close are you standing is my next question. Uh, close enough. Inches. Okay. Yeah, inches away. <laughs> so, <laughs> not like right in his face, but I, 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 I definitely, like in his ear. I've made... I've like quietly made my presence known. Make an insight roll for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. Let out a loud. <laughs> Good to even say it. Thirteen. Thirteen. He noticed you as soon as you came in, but even or as, as soon as you approached, even as he stands up, you know that he's aware of you. But first, he's checking to see if there's anything he needs to do. Um, and he's sort of like looking at bandages, like not moving from where he is. Mm-hmm. He's just sort of looking around, making sure everything's in good shape. Kind of nods to himself and turns. Well, how's it going, friend? Well, that's not the what a casual greeting I was expecting. Um, I uh, sh- like do a short, like l- angled bow and make the sign of uh, Helmia, and and I put my hands to my side and his I, whole posture changes when you do that. He sort of brightens when he sees you do the the motion. Yes, and then I lower my hood uh, to show my hair. And and I go, as a servant of Helmia, I am here to be of your aid. Whoa. Can't believe she just ditched us. <laughs> he nods. I'm looking for an adventuring party. <laughs> <laughs> so other ones I found are kind of whack. I'm a dwarf with a giant axe. <laughs> Hi, I'm a hobbit, and I'm stupid. Um, I say I understand. <laughs> I say, I understand this is where the poor and destitute of your city are uh, of most need, so I thought I would offer my services. How are you with uh, with bandages? How am I with bandages? I don't know. What's your medicine? Um, plus two. Oh. I'm plus two with bandages. <laughs> <laughs> you have a decent sense of field medicine and things like that. I have known my way around uh, an injured soldier or two. Uh, he reaches down and passes you a... Uh, pan with a sponge in it and some water mm-hmm. filled says, with poop <laughs> fresh water clean water this is oh. my scene <laughs> <laughs> sorry and, and you can't po- sit with us <laughs> and points you to a uh, man in the corner and says uh, that man's bandages need to be changed and uh, cleaned if you wouldn't mind of course and I take them respectfully okay. and I walk towards the man <laughs> JD is making funny faces yeah sure is 
<laughs> I'm the guy with the bandages. I don't say anything. <laughs> Are you, you're the guy with the bandages. Yeah, he's playing the character with uh, the bandages. Oh, okay. The, the right. way he's miming it makes me think he's gonna like trip over one of the bodies. He's the looking like he's trying to carry like a cake and an. He's really excited way. about changing his bandages. <laughs> <laughs> Here I go. So, what does this man look like? This man is in his 40s. He's very well built. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> he's Watch got, out. Hi. He's uh. <laughs> We're at the love interest stage. <laughs> Shaved head, uh, thick mustache. Um, oh, okay. You can tell that there. <laughs> it's not my thing, but okay. Oh. Um, you can actually tell that there's like his uh, arm is bandaged and wrapped, and as you mm-hmm. unwrap it and see the wounds, I just go up to this man and start changing his wounds without know. saying anything. Well, what do you say? What do you do? Um, I uh, well, I put my hood up before I walk away. Sure. And um. I, you know, kneel uh, next to the man and I go, excuse me, sir, I understand that you need your bandages chained, changed, yeah. chained. Wow. I understand that you need your bandages changed and um, I'm here to be of service. He uh, holds out his hand, doesn't doesn't say much more. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, as you unwrap it, you notice that it's sort of an odd wound. You would expect, I don't know what you would expect necessarily in terms of a slash or a cut or something like that, but it almost looks like it was raked with fingernails, but they're pretty deep. Um, if you don't mind me asking, how did you um, get these wounds? My uh, line of work is pretty dangerous. I sort of smart to myself. Um, I go, well, what do you do for work? I work in the stables. What stable? With horses? No, with the giants. Oh. Okay. They can get a little unruly at times. He holds up his arm. Yeah, I I can imagine. I can imagine that. I mean, if Anyway, I try to finish um uh bandaging okay. uh his arm as quickly as possible. Fair enough. And I tie it a little extra tight. Fair enough. Oh. This is that's that's supposed to help with the oh. Yep, sure. It's like a tourniquet. Bye. And I Okay. <laughs> walk away. Where do you go next? Do you um, just keep helping out? I just keep helping out, yeah, with with whoever seems to need it most. They begin to serve uh, lunch. Oh, um, okay. And they'll begin to, uh, to distribute dairy, it to you. Dairy Queen. <laughs> sure. What? <laughs> They're having Dairy Queen Cold for lunch? Dairy Queen. What? No, it's Is warm it dairy, dairy Queen. Oh, That's no. to show that it's exactly. not. Yeah, a... Like when they take the blizzard to turn it over, it all falls out. Yeah. <laughs> some Here's luke- your ice cream <laughs> liquid. <laughs> some lukewarm DQ. Uh, no, it's just some broth, some soup, and, oh, okay. and, and All right. some like pretty stale um, bread. I I put I uh, start helping out with handing it out to the people in the temple. Fair enough. Welcome to Friday Night Quests. It's me, Mike Christensen, your host and also your dungeon master. Thank you so much for joining us on episode five. Uh, pardon me, I am recovering from a cold, so in this episode and the next two, uh, I am not at 100%, but I think we still have some pretty great episodes for you, and some more cool announcements coming at you right now in the middle of the show, and the first of those is that our Patreon has reached $150 a month. That means a lot of really cool things, the first of which is that it takes a huge amount of of burden off of us for some of the fees that we have to deal with for making the show that is actually like that was our number one goal is can we get to the point where we are not spending money like losing money on the show and and we now have reached that thank you so much and that is because of you and because of that you've unlocked a little something you have unlocked a bonus series of episodes which i'm putting the finishing touches on they will be with you very soon but you have access to one of our very first recordings as we were testing our equipment way, way back. This is long enough ago that the starter set was out. We're using characters from the D&D 5th edition starter set, but the player's handbook wasn't yet. This is 2014, like almost a year before we actually went on the air. And that is a fun series of episodes that you will have if you donate at the correct level. What what, what, what is the levels? What, what are the levels, Mike? Well, first of all, let me just remind you, patreon.com slash friday night quest that's where you can come support the show give us a hand if you back at at least two dollars a month you unlock bardic inspiration and we will read your name aloud on the show for five dollars a month you get access to the detect magic tier and that is where you get the bonus episodes you also get 
Dungeon Master Notes. We just posted Jay's first Dungeon Master Notes for the very first episode of Friday Night Quests. You can check those out on the Patreon by donating at least $5 a month. We also have a $10 tier, brand new, called Suggestion. And that is where you can give us something to say. Uh, You will get access to a few different things you can put in our mouths. Well, I wish I'd phrased that uh, differently. You have access to us. You can actually tell us things to say. You'll be able to tell us the name of a martial arts move that Quatra has, uh, the name of one of Phineas' songs. You can describe something that Ivy saw in the forest, because of course she doesn't know names for things, because she doesn't have... None of them have names to her, but you can describe a site that she saw, and you can name one of Althea's drinks. You get all of that, all four options, for $10 a month, and we will read them aloud on the show, and then we will let you know, hey, you did that cool thing. We've got some coming up, not in this episode, but coming up in, I think, two weeks. I think that's the one where we read one of them aloud, and it uh, gets pretty silly. You get all of that for only $10 a month. And we have a few new backers, got to read their names aloud. Thank you so, so much to our new backers. Zach Reyes, thank you so much. You are incredible, and your support means so much to us. Matt Morewood, you are a treasure that shines upon us. Thank you so much. And Pope Cody III, you are awesome. You have always been awesome. You will always continue to be awesome. Also, all of our Patreon backers have access to an exclusive Discord server, and this is where you can actually interact with members of the cast and the creative team behind it, and you can actually speak with us and connect with us about D&D and about life, about our stuff. I was at the DMV this morning just chatting on the Discord with listeners of the show, and it was tremendous fun. We were swapping really just unfortunate driver's license photos. Um, It was a lot of fun. And there's some cool memes popping up on there. And honestly, the little community that we're building is so incredible. And we are so grateful. And you can be a part of it. All of our Patreon backers have access to the Discord. So if you back the show on Patreon, but you haven't joined our Discord, you are missing out. It is a lot of fun. Please uh, feel free to hop in. And we would love to have you there. Thank you so much for unlocking the $150 a month level. You folks are amazing. And we do have another reward coming. If you can get us to $500 a month, which seems bananas, but we are actually like closer than I expected. We will, uh, we will, uh, Jay and I are going to watch that 2000s Dungeons and Dragons movie, which is a bad movie. But the reward of which is that we get to put a lot more of our personal time into the show. It's such a challenge to balance doing the show with our personal lives and having jobs, like actual day jobs and same with all of our behind the scenes people but if we can actually get to a point where we can start putting a little bit more towards it that would be an immense help for all of us um thank you so much we really appreciate your help we have another way you can support us we have been trying to get the word out about our show and you are an incredible way to help us do that word of mouth is what makes this show work it's what makes people find the show it's the only way that we have found that people actually can discover us And we are going to ask for a little bit of help in that regard. You can always support the show by helping us out on social media using the hashtag Friday Night Quests. That is such a terrific way to help guide people to the show, and it means so much to us. There's another way that you can help us, and it's by leaving an iTunes review. A specifically, a five-star review really, really helps people discover the show. Right now, we have about 27 reviews on there, and we are trying to get to 50. So we've got a contest going. If we can get to 50 iTunes reviews, not just ratings, but actual written reviews by May 20th, that's six weeks from now, we will randomly give away to one of our reviewers a dice box, a Wormwood dice box that is signed by all of the guests from the first campaign of Friday Night Quests. That's John Harlan Kim, Ika Darville, uh, oh gosh, I shouldn't have started reading names, what am I doing? Seychelle Gabriel is on there, Javier Grigio Marks Watch, uh, Matt Kane. all these people have signed these dice boxes for us, and we have one of them ready if we get to 50 reviews by May 20th. That's a lot, it's, it's double the number that we have right now, but I actually, honestly, genuinely believe that we can do this. If everyone who is listening to the show went on there and had a review, we would have quite a few. But I don't want you to assume that everyone else is going to do it. 
I'm talking to you, specifically you. No, not the people sitting next to you who are also listening. Not them. I'm talking to you right now. If you can spread the word about it, it means so much to us. Every iTunes review we have brightens our day immeasurably, makes us feel so good about the work that we do. We're proud of this podcast, but we want more people to know about it and have access to it. We are so grateful to all of our listeners, and we know that there are more people out there who would really enjoy the show if they just knew it existed. So if you can help spread the word, you can help this show strengthen and grow. You can help the audience strengthen and grow. And that's all we want is to just bring this show to as many people as possible. Thank you so much. Honestly, it means a tremendous amount to us. Thank you so much. We will talk to you soon. The next episode airs on March 29th. And again, May 20th is the deadline for those iTunes reviews if you want to receive a dice box. And thank you so much. Uh, Kick some ass. Take some memes. Talk to you later. Bye. Starwipe 2. The three of you make your way down to the common quarter um, as you're moving through on your way to the stables. Um, Yosef is leading you. A little shuffling feet, but he has to stop occasionally and make sure some guards get different directions and passes them on to other places. Make perception checks, everyone. 15 for Phineas. 7. 23. 23. Uh, you recognize this man because you were just speaking with him earlier this yeah, morning. Yeah, it's Yosef. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's Braun. You see Braun... Oh. Um, in the like sort of in an alley as you're passing through and he's speaking with some other individuals um mm, i uh give him a surreptitious like uh conspiratorial head nod more big words and a wink <laughs> and also some more big words <laughs> Make I, give him, in- I give him a wink Ki- uh-huh. a kiss uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> and I waggle my eyebrows. I flip them off silently. A little bit. <laughs> Make an insight roll. Silently. <laughs> I flip them off loudly. <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> the most epic bird been flipped. So, sir, the fire giants, they respond to epic burns. <laughs> um, did, what did you want me to roll Insight. For? Insight. Uh, well, what are was, we doing? What is this game? game? I don't what, know. what are we playing? <laughs> um, that's a six. Okay. <laughs> cool. Amazing! Yeah, Great. His 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 response was as mysterious as your <laughs> open. Two th- yeah. I also two thumbs up, real tight and close to me. It looks okay. like you're doing like baseball. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> thinking, <laughs> steal third. What? what? And then I and I go. Oh, are we good? <laughs> From like across the yeah. street. <laughs> are we good? Who are you talking to? Shh, 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 shh. He's part of the uh, resistance. For freedom. Fighters. Freedom fighters. These are the people we're getting dinner with later, right? Oh yeah. Why did you flip him off? <laughs> oh, uh, but that's. I was Is that what that was called? <laughs> I was yeah. Just, I was just joking. He did it. so many things. Which one was it? Was it all of them? Didn't this guy tie you to a chair? Yeah, that was part of the flip off, but it was also a kind of like secret signal. Uh, okay. All right, but we're on their side, right? I hey, you guys, don't make sure to fall. <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry. He's Joseph. gone like two feet. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph. Um, he leads you to a set of stairs right against the edge, like uh, the wall of the city. You go all the way to the outside wall and begin to walk down this sort of tunnel. You go down and down, and you can feel the air getting more claustrophobic as you go down. And then you enter into this large chamber, and you see a bunch of straw on the ground. You smell the scent of human, well, for a want of a better term, but, human waste. Oh. Uh, lava, as they call it. Human lava. <laughs> oh, as the fire giants call it. <laughs> they had salsa, so it's human lava. Uh, yeah. No, you, you smell the, the the scent of excrement. and uh, The excrement? Ex- excrement. Extra. Excrement. Extra, extra. Well, for them, it's extra. extra. Read all about shit. <laughs> Ooh. We call it extra. Zingers. And there's this large open... Butthole. Doorway. Oh. Doorway. <laughs> Jesus Christ. One of these days I will finish oh, a description. Oh, this is why. <laughs> it's right in the front. <laughs> there's the sunlight coming in from the desert, and there's just this open passageway into the outside. Um, and you see, like, there's a, there's a small barricade preventing someone from leaving either direction, either your way or out, although you don't really think this passageway is large enough for a giant to fit. Hmm. Are we um, at ground level now? You would be... Well, the funny thing is you're not at ground level with the city. You're below that. 
but you are not yet at ground level with the desert. Got it. Uh, you're you're basically in this like part way down the slab, um, and as you see, like the the rock continues to slope down from outside uh, through the passageway, and you can see more doors in the hallway that you're in, more doorways into large chambers. Hmm. The one that you're looking into is currently empty. Okay, um, so we supposedly a fire giant was roosting in here. Yes. Okay. And uh, Yosef turns. Hey, well, I sleep in this area. Right. We, we could have brought anyone. We could have brought anyone. We also but we brought him. Bring an interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> can I roll insight into what he's saying ever? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. I can read minds. Oh, my Wait, God. Can you really? Does Wait, he, I want to roll insight. I can Is detect it a thoughts. It's a second level spell. Oh, my gosh. You're going to waste yeah, a second level spell slot on read thoughts? On Yosef. Thoughts. I, rolled, thoughts, I, I mean? rolled a 10 about what he just said. On what? Insight? Yeah. Uh, he was saying something about the room that you were in. That seemed. This apparent. is a room that we are in. Yep. Um, we're looking to see where the other fire giants might be. He cocks a thumb and says, "Oh, I'm going go this way," and begins to lead you further down the hallway. Okay, I think I rolled a sixteen about what he said. Uh, further this way. All and right, so we follow him. Okay. Yeah. Um, he leads you, and you see into the next chamber. You see this one has a shape sitting inside a large, twenty foot tall humanoid. Are there any other guards leading into this area at all, or is it just Joseph? You don't see any guards, but you hear more activity, and you hear other human voices further down the hall. On the other side of this door? Uh, further down the hallway, uh, the, where the passageways are. Oh, okay. So these are like the, what we're looking into are like the <clears throat> rooms in which the fire giants are probably kept. Okay, exactly. so I want to head towards where I hear other people. Okay, you scurry down the hallway. Scurry. I, I mean, scurry. I <laughs> scurry. You know, I, you know, we're halflings. We don't scurry everywhere. That's we're not right. called hobbits. I'm, you know, sorry. I'm a little offended. You guys. skitter? Yeah, that's that's the correct term. So I skitter down the hall. Uh, <laughs> you skipper down the hallway. Skipper, 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 skipper. With little baby feet. You are a bard. <laughs> He's so. so good at skipping. It's, I mean, I'm classically trained in skipping. Um, you make your way down the hall. Excuse me. Uh, do you have a second? Uh, you turn and you see an individual wearing. Um, they're they're like stripped down to their waist. Uh, it's, it's a it's another man. Uh, yes. so, on. so they're not wearing bottoms. Uh, they're wearing bottoms. Oh, um, but they're not wearing anything above the waist, and they've got a got whip. It. It's Adam their... Driver. <laughs> I wouldn't say waist. I would say mid like mid chest. I only there. undress down to my belly button. <laughs> only my wife may see my belly button. <laughs> um, he's got a whip on his he- on his hip. Yeah, he does. Um, and he looks down at you, and you see that he's got, like, a, a scar, just, like, a, a single scar running from his collarbone down to, like, mid-sternum. So would you say that since I'm really smaller than him, and if he's got a whip on oh, his no. hip, then he dips, he dips, he dips to talk to me? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Inspiration, yes. inspiration, inspiration. Yes, 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 inspiration. yes, yes. I don't know what that it's means. Like it's like a song. It's so his... good. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention this. When the game began, uh, remember that scene that you guys were all talking to each other, and you were talking about, like, your drama and your role playing and all that stuff from the last episode i was gonna give you all inspiration for that yeah but now only i get it no you all get inspiration oh, oh. all of us yeah. all of Yay. you oh it's so cute on wait, D&D beyond it's what a little are, sun rising what are we what are, wait what exactly is that for again because we talk to people the scene that you had the four of you together where you were talking oh. about you, what you were doing in the city about the revolution about your individual sort of tension amongst each other and it, oh the scene where the, the scene where i basically where was everyone like, i'm done off. now <laughs> yeah okay yeah. it was for plot thank you there was some a plus role playing in that scene thank you oh uh, thanks yep i really like this so, game i really it's fun i like to play the game <laughs> yay uh, excuse me, sir. I'm I'm trying to find a friend of ours. Her name's Althea. She's got a uh, red complexion, like a tiefling. She's kind of angry a lot. Uh, the only red folks here are the the giants. Okay, so she's not here. Okay, well that was uh, straightforward. Uh, curious, by the way. Why do you? What's going on with the fire giants? Well, the ones who are here are resting before their next journey. I don't have to ask that question. I was going to ask her are they compensated at all. That's definitely not the case. How do you keep the uh, fire giants so docile? That wasn't the word I was going to use, but you said it, so... Well, they know better. What does that mean? <laughs> and he uh, opens up the doorway, and you notice that the, the gate that's keeping them from entering the hallway is not high enough to really stop them from 
moving through. Mm. Uh, but he, it's it's enough. It's a barrier of sorts. Um, and he he walks into the pen of this giant. And you see that there's a a giant woman, uh, sort of sitting against the wall. And he goes, Zal, Zal, why don't you stand up? And the giant sighs, stands up. Zal, do a little turn around. Yeah, and, I think that's okay. I think I, I think I've got the point. Zal is wearing sort of very ragged clothes, and as she turns. Uh, her thighs and uh, calves are heavily bare the marks of whipping. Hmm. That's not okay. So you keep them in here with the whip, huh? Well, it's either that or they wander out into the desert and not much out there for you, is there, Zal? Zal doesn't say anything. So what? Hmm. Can I roll, like, a history check on fire giants? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh. Mm. 16. What are you looking to learn? I'm looking to learn, are right. fire giants, like, naturally evil? Like, if they were unleashed upon the world, <laughs> do they lean to the side of darkness and bad things and murder? Fire giants have a history of a militaristic society. You know that. Evil is tricky because there's certainly, you would say that their agendas have not been in line with the human populations that have governed the world. Uh, from the standards of humans, their encounters with fire giants, you would probably say yes. But they're not really conquerors of the material plane. You would have to consult with Althea a little more to know what their relationship is on the fire plane. Well, so the, they're like the French. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, you do know that Althea referenced not being a fan of them, but that they are a, a, a noble people. I did say that. I did say they were a proud people. Dang it, I don't have detect magic. I'm trying to see if there's something magical holding her in here. Make an arcana check. She doesn't look chained, right? She's not chained. Okay. My arcana is garbage. Here we go. 17. 17. Um, arcana is not detect magic, obviously. It doesn't, this is not an analog, but you can look for glyphs or signs of mm-hmm. magical influence or or restraints you don't see anything that indicates anything restraining her in and you definitely don't see anything that seems to restrain her mind uh she seems to be acquiescing out of her circumstances phineas kind of changes his approach and smiles a bit wow that is impressive i mean how these fire giants are so powerful i mean how do you keep them in here don't tell me it's just with that whip well, they don't exactly have a lot of options. It's this or the desert. And, uh, your brother didn't come back, did he, Zal? She balls her fists and does nothing. I assume she... There was a brother here, maybe in the earlier room up there? Yeah, he's in, he was in one of the pens. He escaped? No, no, just dangerous on the road. So, if a fire giant got out of here, they... There's just nothing out there in the desert? I mean, they can try their luck in the sunken city, but it's just as dangerous down there as it is on the surface, probably more. Okay. So they literally can leave whenever they want. If they want. Well, why wouldn't they want to leave? Where's there to go? Sunken city? I mean, just a thought. Just (laughs) curious how you managed to convince this many fire giants to stay in their cells here well they get a pretty good deal meal and board and you get to see the world right Zal? well they get to see the desert and all the waypoints along the way i have to imagine you losing her brother is a pretty significant cost for the city right that's the rebels they'll be made to pay well i mean as a jailer right or tamer i assume it's your responsibility to go after that fire giant and bring them back wouldn't you think you think it's lost? You think it's wandering out there? He didn't come back. But, I He's mean... He's still where they left him. What do you mean? Who left them where? The rebels. Brought him down. All the passengers on him, too. Cut the balloon free. Who are these rebels? Warriors. Soldiers. People who didn't take to the truce. 
They don't think this war's over. Well, don't you think it's your responsibility to go out and reclaim any of the uh, items that were on that fire giant? Let the Bay House deal with their people. Once they're done, once the rebels are gone, we'll clean up the scraps, we'll deal with the body. But I mean, if you came back with valuable materials, don't you think that they'd probably reward you for that? I suppose, but it's a dangerous desert out there. I know it's dangerous, but how about this? If you go out there and you happen to find those materials in the shape that you're in, you'll come back as a, I mean, kind of a conquering hero. So you know what? I suggest (laughs) that you get out there right now and go get those materials, don't you think? Suggestion! Suggestion, baby. Are you, are you giving him a fetch quest? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you drop the, quest. Now, if you drop the materials at any given time, you automatically lose. <laughs> I have to go out and find all the Joker riddles. So, get all the so Riddler trophies. So we're supposed trophies. to be doing fetch quests, not them. It's a wisdom saving throw. Uh, he got a seven. He failed. I know, it's five <laughs> less, six less than he needed. d and is the only game where you get to be the quest giver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great, actually. It's so true. Oh, before you go, I'll hold on to your whip. Obviously, you're not going to need that out there. Well, of course I am. I'm going to have to bring Zal. Oh, no, no, no. Trust me. I suggest that you going out there by yourself, just <laughs> you against nature, is really going to make the compelling story when you return <laughs> all that more epic. I mean, the legends, the songs will be sung. I'm a bard. I mean, I know about the songs that will be sung. It'll be epic. I would like you to make a persuasion roll with advantage, just because you're you're kind of amending the suggestion. You're yeah, adding I know. conditions. I know. Ordinarily, you'd have to recast, but I think that it's close enough. I'm just going to see the persuasion check. Uh, I have advantage, so yeah. let's re-roll that. Oh, great. 22. He nods. Noise. Yeah, I suppose if the others knew, I do have to grab one thing. I don't want to leave without it. He uh, hands over the whip and walks away and comes back a few minutes later uh, putting on a shirt to cover his arms and his shoulders. It was his shirt? <laughs> and he says, Never leave home without it. Yeah. Don't want to get a sunburn. I totally, totally understand. That's going to be the most important thing. Absolutely. Uh, well, good luck, and I can't wait to write that song about you. I'm looking for... Oh, uh, I didn't get your name. Oh, my name? Well, because you're going to need mine, and I, I suppose oh, I have to ask yours. My name's Yosef. Yosef, very nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. Uh, you can call me Vannon. Vannon. Well, Vannon, good luck out there. And I, Yosef, can't wait to write a song about you. Terrific. I'll talk to you soon, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he uh, he actually steps out through the gate that it leads into. Oh, no, you're in Zal's mm-hmm. cell still. So he goes through the gate out of Zal's cell, out onto the rock, and just starts walking down the slab. Thanks for listening to Friday Night Quests. Your heroes will return in two weeks. Ivy is played by Amanda Joy Condon. You can follow her on Twitter at Amanda Joy. That's spelled a man, duh, joy. Althea is played by Hillary Levi. You can follow her on Twitter at Hillary Levi. Phineas is played by Jay Jones. You can follow him on Twitter at Jay Awesome Jones and on his other podcasts, Roll the Seas and Wrath and Story. Quatra is played by Jeremy Fox. You can follow him on Twitter at J. Lee Fox. I'm Mike Christensen, and I'm on Twitter at SuperGeekMike. Our theme song was composed by Kyle Fryer. He writes fantastic tracks for your D&D games, among other things, so follow him on SoundCloud for more great musical content. This episode included music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. You can find the track listing and credits in the show notes. This episode also included ambient sound from TabletopAudio.com. Are you interested in bonus episodes of Friday Night Quests, the kind you won't hear anywhere else? How about exclusive access to our Dungeon Master Notes? You can find that and more by supporting our show at patreon.com slash FridayNightQuests. We also have an online store. If you visit the merch link on our website, you can go to our Redbubble shop and get t-shirts, mugs, notebooks, phone cases, and so much more. If you like our show, we recommend you check out Wrath and Story, a hilarious RPG show set in the grimdark universe of Warhammer 40k. Jay Jones and Andrew Dickinger, along with their servo skull Daniel Fernandez, bounce from one crazy adventure to the next, hoping for fortune, glory, and decent dice rolls. If you have any questions about the show, you can email us at FridayNightQuests at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at PartialArc. Thanks for listening, and until next time, 
play fair, and have fun. Severus Athenipal. <laughs>